Right, hello everybody, welcome to the second quarter final of the uh, Champions Cup, season 21, I believe, the last one with money. And we have Dionysian versus Andri, uh, Dionysian with the Dwarves, won the toss, chose to receive. There, he's got a Apo as his only inducement, he got rid of his Death Roller, which I think is a good idea. And uh, yeah, he's got quite a good team, hasn't he, Dio? Yeah, everyone's we everyone's wearing yellow. And he starts off with a KO of an armor nine player. Yeah, he's, he's got he's got like uh, four piling on. Yeah, four piling on, which is quite good, isn't it? Even against armor nine, you're gonna break them sometimes if you pile on all the time. And he's got a strength up, loads of guard, like ten guard. Some stand firm. Pretty great team. And then he's got these two kind of crappy star players, but he's got enough out there, so they're only they're only ten K each. Four bombers and three with tackle, yeah. And goes for the blitz on the uh bull with a strength four guy. Obviously he could have uh, he could have put his blitzer on the LOS and blitzed him with Pom, but I can understand not wanting to have, you know, put three players on him. So yeah, and then the what does what does Andre has? He has a strength four claw mighty, which I prefer to uh, piling on. He, it was his last skill, you know. He already had claw mighty, and he chose strength over piling on. I would also choose strength over over anything on a uh, on a chaff blocker. And he's got one he's got one claw palm. So you know his team looks way worse than uh, Dionysians, and Dionysians is less TV. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? But it's all about if if the claw palmer has a good game, isn't it? Then he's got a shot. But um, it's asking a lot, really. I don't like how far back his uh, his guy is. I also don't like that he um, he didn't block with him on the LOS really. But there you go. He's this one's got jump up, isn't it? So it's all right actually. Yeah. Okay. This is an incredible, incredible long beard, isn't it? Pom, jump up, pro and uh, guard. That is amazing. Indeed, careful. Oh, he's just running around with him now. So he is blitzing. He's, one, he's going for it to one dice blitz and gets a pow. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting behavior. <laughs> Oh, spoilers, careful. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're playing, if you're playing Dio, yes. Yes, careful. If you're playing Dio. <laughs> um, you might not be, though. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows who's going to win this? <laughs> Well, I think that well, I think that was pretty bad by Dio, wasn't it? Really, because he got there and then realised, oh shit, he's got he's got I haven't got tackle and he's uh, string four, so a bit of a fuck up there, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, obviously, Kefu would rather the Chorfs win because this this dwarf team looks devastating to Amazons with all the piling on mighty blow. No, oh, yeah, that was a double skull for Andrew, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, wasn't it? Didn't really notice, because you expect people to roll double skulls from time to time. But, um, yeah, that was his first double skull. <laughs> yes, like, yeah, but it just lets them greed, doesn't it? That's the thing, it just lets them greed. It, 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 and you only get punished for the greed one time out of 36. And you get rewarded for the greed. Well, one time in 72, don't you? You only get punished one time in 72. And um, it's good if you do have jump up, because it means you can pro the jump up that you would normally never re-roll. So it's good that you, if you've got things that you would never normally re-roll, it's good. 
um, like Hypnotic Gaze and Pro and Bloodlust. So like it's great on vampires. Um, and you can reroll stuff like Foul Appearance that you would never use a team reroll for if you're playing against Nurgle. So it's it's good in all those situations, and it's also good if you're one of those people who always who always greets, then you get a lot of value out of it. I don't like the always greeting, but um, it's it adds to your. Ooh, there's a power apple on a KO on turn three. That's very early, isn't it? And also kind of late. Um, you know, like it wasn't the first turn, was it? Or even second turn. Third turn to use the apple there. It's a little late to use a power apple. Yep. Yeah, yeah, arcade games. It's not ideal, is it? But, you know, it makes it makes a lot of... The fact that I'm streaming it means that I've kind of got to put that on there because otherwise it makes no sense on YouTube. It does make this a three dice. I wasn't that happy about making it a three dice because um, he could have come down here couldn't even got a 2d here but instead he just does a 1d i wouldn't have hated get, keeping him down here to because you know he's getting overpowered a bit in this corner isn't he now but i obviously it's fine getting an extra player up there and making it 3d is good and exactly you might never wake up again yeah so it wasn't a bad it wasn't a bad apple by any means um absolutely not a bad apple but it's just a bit late to do it on a ko isn't it especially against a guy who's got a claw pommer so, uh, you know, it was just, it was certainly not an auto apple, was it? Uh, you could talk about whether it was a good apple or not. <laughs> was that pro, was it, that did that? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't like pro personally. But, um, yeah, I understand people do. Some people do. And honestly, Hippie, Hippie, get, Hippie and Ornan both took it, and they were both proing all the time. And it's, uh, you know, it was good. It worked out for them, didn't it? So he's got 2D on the ball here, hasn't he? If he, if he gets a couple of knockdowns here, he can get 2D on the ball. With this assist here. But he only gets a push. Jim Shard. If he got the pow, he could have got another pow. And he could have uh, he could have gone in for two D with tackle on the ball. And he comes around there for that and gets the pow, which is pretty cool. But I I kind of didn't like him moving this guy around. Only kind of. And I also kind of didn't like him moving the ball back because I felt like there was only one way for Dio to go here, which is back, isn't it, reconnecting here. So I kind of liked the ball to go like there. Once he'd moved this guy to here and got that knockdown, I really liked the ball like going into here um, to kind of get in the way of this reconnecting. And obviously he was unlucky to double one the GFI there, but I didn't like him going back very much. Does it jump up uphill because of armor seven? Outrageous. And gets claw pommed. I, I think I would have liked to have not made that block and not get claw pommed. <laughs> Personally. And it's the first double one, but he has, he has double skulled as well. The thing is, you're going to blitz him and base the ball, isn't he? Yeah. That's the obvious thing to do. And then just punch with the ball. Get the other ball in. No, no, it was a, it was a snake GFI. Okay, fool. <laughs> yeah, sure, feet. It was a sure feet. First GFI with sure feet fail. 
So yeah, this is uh, it's getting tricky for Dio, isn't it? Because he, he got back here, but then um, it's a huge both down there. Rerolls it, last reroll, and it's a big one in eighty-one. Because now he's like, well, I'll just have to hit with a ball carrier. So he's and fails a dodge. So he's got a good chance. A death. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a dev and that's his second apple and it works unbelievable so um that was a big dodge fail wasn't it hello Tastrin. so now i mean this is an easy 2d on the ball isn't it you stand him up 2d him and you've got 2d with a bull or you could just go for a assist with the bull and get a 1d on the ball um cheeky badly hurt I prefer going for the 2D with a bull, even though it's less likely to knock him over. Just because um I tried to free him up there with a block. The power would have uh, made him not have to dodge. Because if you go for the blitz with him, you might have to you've got a GFI, haven't you? You might want in nine the block. And you might fail the dodge. And you might fail the GFI. So I think if you make it a two D, at least you've got less chance of turning over when you hit him. Even though you've got slightly less odds of knocking him over. He does get the knockdown, and then a horrible scatter and a six-plus catch. That is a nightmare result for Andre. That isn't it. I mean, that is so bad. And he hadn't used a uh, break tackle on the dodge, so he could have still, you know, if it gone anywhere else, he could have gone out and maybe he's picked it up. Um, Dio going for this, going for this chain out. Now, what I would have done. <laughs> now, this is the thing. This is why I say it because it's not like. It's not like there's a definite best play, is there? So that's why I'm just saying my idea was just go for a handoff. He's got no rerolls though. So that when I was thinking, if I think if he had a reroll, I think the better play was to uh, stay in the tackle zone of the bull and just do the handoff and run run away. With him not having a reroll, obviously he doesn't want to risk a handoff and not have anyone in scoring range. But it does mean that the bull has got a chance to go and hit the ball carrier. So I really would have preferred to have a guy. You know, the guy stood there. But as it is, he goes for this player. And uh, it's fine, but he can get hit by the ball. That's the problem, isn't it? Also, maybe he should have gone just in front of him. Uh, hello, Wayne Farah. So now I think for sure. He goes for the bull, right? He, he has to go for the bull, double dodge here. He's got dodge. So, you know, he's 50% he's to make the first dodge anyway and, and still have break tackle for the second one. But he's got dodge for the second one, whatever happens anyway. So he's, the, se the first one's basically 83% and the second one's 75%. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So he has to go for the ball. Uh, but he doesn't. He just doesn't, which I don't like. I don't like it. Gets a, gets a knock down there. Break tackles away, bases up. But, I don't know, I think he should have hit the ball. Really think he should have hit the ball. Yeah, playing for killing not stopping. Weird, isn't it? Really weird that. And he runs him away. Maybe he, maybe he should have gone up to try and base him as well. <laughs> he should dodge one day, I think, rather than just four plus. No, four plus is better, isn't it? I think I think four plus is just better. Yeah, four plus is just better without a reroll. <laughs> yeah. But that was huge, wasn't it? He? he gave up that hit there. And maybe he shouldn't have done. His apple failed, which is obviously unlucky. But that's that's a massive weight off Dio's mind, isn't it? I think it was fine Dio going for the hit first, even though he hasn't got a reroll, just because Dio's a huge favourite to win now, isn't he? Um, based on attrition alone. So... 
I think that's absolutely fair by him. And he's got these uh he's got these throwaway dwarves to use in the second half if he wants. But this is only what three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten at max for Andre. And two reserves for Dio. Yeah, the Chorf, the Chorf team, I'm not surprised. Look how rowdy the, the Dwarf team's got 10 guard, and it's got 4 pom. While the Chorfs have only got, uh, I just haven't got much, a Claw Mighty and a Claw Pom, and the Claw Pom's been cast. Double Skull there for Andre. Second Double Skull. Um, I don't know how well it made him play Wayne Farah, but I think it definitely made him roll better. That's the second double. That's the third double skull of the game <laughs> for Andre. <laughs> Two in one turn. So yeah, little but unlucky. But I mean, that's the time to do it, right? On a nothing turn where you're just blocking for damage. So although he rolled two double skulls there, they were the least impactful double skulls you can possibly roll. So that was all right for him, at least. And uh, he got the guy back. So he's got 10. So he can even up the odds with the claw hit if he's lucky. <sighs> Just being a prat squirrel dude. <laughs> Just being a bit of a prat. snap and a wrestle ball carrier don't like that isn't he wrestle tackle sure hands and edge <laughs> you've got to get the sweet SPP haven't you that's always the most important thing in Blood Bowl get that sweet SPP maybe he should have set this up so that he could have possibly had a three dice with a, with a strength fall uh, maybe. I mean, that's obviously nitpicky, but it's something he could have thought about, isn't it? Potentially. He has got Boomer. He has got Boomer for potential bomb throwings. Don't be confused if you're new to Blood Bowl. This is not a goblin. This is a dwarf. It's just cyanide. Didn't bother <laughs> giving him a proper model. <laughs> There's another double skull. <laughs> and he did think a long time about re-rolling this, and maybe he could have maybe he could have not re-rolled it. Maybe he could have saved his re-roll there. Um wouldn't have hated it. Or maybe he should have just gone for the pickup first and then not, not re-rolled it. Because the dwarves aren't really putting him under any pressure, are they? Oh, he, I think he put him there and then realised he was in a bomb square and then went back, didn't he? But he can bomb these three, couldn't he? Or these four. These four would be a good bomb square. He's getting the pressure on. He's getting the heat with this. <laughs> yep, so he throws there. And it's two, three knockdowns. Three out of four knockdowns. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it's all a bit tricky now, isn't it? Fucking boomer. Claw this dwarf, couldn't he? I'll claw the dwarf. He's actually a guard. I'll claw the guard. But also Pom. I'm not sure I like the commitment over that side. It's tough though, isn't it? I mean, it's it's tough to criticise anything Andrew's doing here because he's in such a horrible spot. Yeah, I thought he'd punch him. 
And then I guess try and dodge this one out to go around. Like here or something. Ah, okay. Yeah, get the guard in. Okay, fair enough. If you mind my rebel match, yes, C Sabs, but you can watch it on the uh, on the VOD. <laughs> yeah, you know you're in deep shit when but even Boomer works, yeah, that's true. Hitting the uh hitting the hobgobs for another cars. He's, he's had pretty good luck when hitting the hobgobs, to be fair, Dio. He's cast a couple. I mean, he, he's only punched them a couple of times. Repositions Boomer, which I think was worth it. I don't think he was throwing a great bomb there. Better to, better to use him like an actual player. I don't really like isolating his uh, his claw here because there isn't there isn't anything for this guy to do but stand up and this guy easy to move back and hit him, isn't it? But then on the other hand, that's three player commitment, so it's not bad. So it's it's just really hard for Henry now, isn't it? He's down, man. He's getting out bashed. He's obviously out guarded to death, and there's nothing really good he can do. Apart from up for like some removals and stuff. You can kill that guy though. That was pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty good. Good news for Carefool as well. Um, <laughs> if if uh, Dionysian wins, that that is a player that he won't have to face. A tackle pom. More blocks. He is gonna. He is gonna take the palm hit on this claw. But they were absolutely <laughs> rock hard today, <laughs> and so was my cock. Tries to pro it. See, now I, I didn't really like that hit because th this guy could have come in here and he could have blitzed here and he could have like won the fight in the middle more. Nearly knocked the ball over there. And I kind of liked uh, going in the middle of the fight more and just leaving this guy on his tod. Um, but he went for that hit, you know, obviously he wanted to get the removal and stuff, not be hit by Claw anymore, but I kind of liked swarming the middle more, personally. Wow, a death there, only a rookie though. But huge, huge for the drive, isn't it? So now Dio's down to what, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? I think, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Versus three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine versus nine. He's even the numbers up. The claw guy just runs away from them and gets stunned. That's him out of the game for ages. So now this three man commitment looks fantastic. Because he nearly killed him with a piling on, and now he's just out forever. And these are just fast enough to get relevant, aren't they? Should have done the safe moves first, though. <laughs> Gets a bomb attempt at both of them, which is quite good, isn't it, with the, uh, <laughs> the bombardier? <laughs> Ooh, it's great near the dwarf pile on. He's got the dwarf, the dwarf safety with the GFI there. Incredible, but it does put him in range of the sideline, so he, there's nowhere safe, is there, for a potato? Again, this the ball carrier avoids the uh, avoids the uh, bomb. 
And he looks like he's going for the score here, doesn't it? As he does the handoff. Maybe he could have just ran back. Um, but it was hard, wasn't it? Getting two guys stunned. One guy's completely isolated. He does the handoff. Reroll use. Does not score. He would have taken a GFI to score. Instead he goes for the dodge. Break tackle dodge blitz. And uh, double skulls again. <laughs> double skulls again. <laughs> wow. So he's got the option of a double GFI to make it two dice. Which he should probably do, I think. Yeah. He is defenceless. Oh, but he makes this rando block and rolls a double skulls of his own. So now, he doesn't really want to do the GFIs, does he? He just goes for the 1D. Gets the POW. Doesn't pile on. Wimp. <laughs> <laughs> then does his safe moves first. I mean, obviously he should have done this first, right? He obviously should have made that move first, but we'll forgive him. Even Blood Bowl supercomputers make mistakes sometimes. And uh, it's another cow's. Yeah, it's fair enough. I mean, he's gotten loads of mighty blow hits, but um, and it's unlikely at one in thirty-six. But there you go. Uh, Andrew's just one in thirty-six again <laughs> with the <laughs> GFI. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty brutal for Andre. Double skulls in uh, in uh, double ones in consecutive turns. Absolutely banged on. Yeah, I mean, the random blocks weren't random. They obviously, if he gets removals, it's good. But, um... It's not like he was wrong to do the blocks first. Just that once he'd rolled the double skulls, it meant that he couldn't do those GFIs anymore, didn't he? But at least, you know, if, if you're going to do the one day, at least move the uh, runner, up, the blitzer up first, right? That's just that's just something that was just definitely wrong. There's no, there's no uh, conceding anything there. If you if you definitely if you're not making the GFIs with the blitzer, then you move them up first, don't you? This was a bit wrong, I think, by uh, by Andre. I would have rather he went this way, blitz this guy, and then you pow him and go to there, and then you've got three, four, five, six GFI, GFI. With this one, if you block him, what, well, you're trying to get a scatter or something? I think it was definitely better to go the other way. Um, but he got a 1 in 9 anyway. So he's gone double double skull, double 1, 1 in 9. <laughs> so, and then uh, and then I think he gives up by not rerolling that dodge. Wow. Really rotten down. Maybe he should have, uh, you know, gone the right way. <laughs> and got a pow and then made the dodge and it's gone. Yeah, he's got to go for the surf chance, hasn't he? Foul first because he's got a, he's got a bribe. So that's absolutely fine, isn't it, to foul first? I think without a bribe it wouldn't have been good to foul first, but with a bribe, absolutely. And then cheeky one dice surf to ice the game. He does not. That would have that would have finished the game 100% because this guy couldn't have scored just by himself. Uh, but with him not getting the knockdown, there is a chance for Andre. Um, he actually does it wrong, I think, because I think it'd be better to go for the break tackle block, uh, break tackle blitz, dodge to here, punch him, and then stand over here to get a four plus catch. At the moment, it's a six plus catch. So um, I think that was the play. But instead. He just decides to roll number one instead. <laughs> and another double one. So that's uh, three snake GFIs and about four or five double skulls. 
<laughs> so yeah, not the best dice from Andrew. Um, <laughs> oh, Senai. So yeah, and he does the right thing here of not getting the surf because obviously he wants he wants to skill up his players. Um, doing a surf here doesn't achieve anything. It robs him of potential SPPs, in fact. I don't know, understand. Maybe he's just blitzing with him to try and make the, uh, you know, because if, if he blitzes him, then he just gets the pick up without dodging, does he? So um, maybe that was better. Maybe that was better, honestly, to, to blitz him and then three and pass it and catch him a six. Might have been better than trying to dodge him a four and a three. I don't know. <laughs> right. So there you go. That was it. 13 AV breaks each, funnily enough. Uh, but obviously they had Claw, but they also had some Armour 7 guys as well who got beaten up. Both MVP is the uh, AV guy, busted guy and the dead guys, the two wasted MVPs. But I think it was, you know, it was, uh, he just moved. Oh, well, then it was horrible, I think, then careful. But there you go, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? You, you forgive him there. He was obviously feeling desperate. He didn't have much of a chance. Um, I think I think Dio definitely got the better of the dice. But, um you know, and both sides could have made different decisions, couldn't they? It was, I think, it was a good game. Both, both played pretty well, didn't they? And uh, there you go. So, congrats to Dio. Commiserations to Andre. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.